Hello, welcome back. Today I'm back at the Riverside Cemetery in Denver, Colorado. One of the oldest operating cemeteries here in Denver. We're gonna be visiting the grave of Elizabeth Piper Ensley. She was responsible for getting women the right to vote right here in Colorado. So I'm gonna tell you about her story as we go look for her grave. It's a little windy today and we're right by some train tracks so I apologize if it's kind of windy and noisy in this video. All right, Elizabeth Piper Ensley was an African-American educator, political activist, and suffragist. Her leadership was instrumental in Colorado's Victoria's campaign for full voting rights in 1893. Ensley dedicated her career to organizing for women's rights, especially for African American women. She led critical local, state, and national women's organizations where she worked to bridge the racial lines in women's organizations. Although some sources claim that Ensley was born in 1848 in the Caribbean, census and marriage records, as well as her grave, place her birth at New Bedford, Massachusetts on January 19th, 1847. Her mother, Jane Gibson, was born a slave in Georgia. Her father, Philip Piper, was born free in Virginia and worked as a sailor aboard a whaling ship. Elizabeth's family, like many African Americans in New Bedford, were involved in the early abolition movement. They had even established their own schools to ensure their children had access to education. It was in one such school that Elizabeth was able to begin her education. In her early 20s, Elizabeth took the opportunity to travel to Europe. While there, she continued her studies in Switzerland and Germany. When she returned, she began her work as a teacher and helped start a circulating library in Boston. It was around this time that she met a fellow teacher named Newell Ensley. Ensley had been born into slavery and was owned by his grandfather, but he had been taught to read and write at a young age and devoted himself to education. Elizabeth and Newell were married in 1882. For a time, they taught at Howard University in Washington, D.C., and then Mississippi, before moving to Denver in 1887. The African-American community was only about 2% of Denver's total population at the time. They had three children, Roger, born in 1883, Charlotte, born in 1885, and Jean, born in 1888. Sadly, her husband, Newell, died in Denver on May 23rd, 1888, and then their third child, Jean, died the following month in June of 1888. Being a single parent would not be easy for a woman in the 1800s, but that would not stop Elizabeth Ensley. While raising her children on her own, Elizabeth became even more active in civil rights. She began working for the Colorado Equal Suffrage Association, which sought to gain women the right to vote. She was the treasurer and beginning with a fund of $25, helped gain the money necessary for the campaign. She also served as a correspondent for the Journal of the National Association of Colored Women, writing articles about the struggle for progress in Colorado. In 1893, 
Colorado became the first state to recognize the right of women to vote after a statewide election. Due to the silver panic of 1893, miners who had lost their jobs were in Denver with their families. In Colorado, Elizabeth joined Denver's relief efforts for the poor and the homeless, contacting people that she knew in Washington, D.C. and Boston to help fund relief efforts. In 1904, Elizabeth founded the Association of Colored Women's Clubs. This was an attempt to unite various organizations around Colorado, push for greater equality, and provide educational opportunities. Part of Elizabeth's work included gaining the support of black men on issues like national women's suffrage. She even helped unite men and women of all races to elect Colorado's first black legislator, Joseph Stewart. The group's rallying song encapsulated Elizabeth Ensley's lifelong mission to fight for the rights of women and African Americans. And this song said, we're Colorado's colored women struggling for a place. We're loyal to our country and we're loyal to our race. We're holding high the banner in the dust that must not trail. As we go marching on, onward upward to the summit, we're advancing step by step. Elizabeth also served as, as the second vice president of the Colorado State Federation of Colored Women's Clubs. She delivered an address to the Federation in 1906 titled Women in the Ballot. She was the only African American member of the predominantly white board of the Colorado Federation of Women's Clubs. By the mid 1910s, Elizabeth was recognized a leader. In 1915, she was elected president of the Women's League of Denver. In 1918, she helped the Colorado Federation of Colored Women's Club host the National Federation's Convention in Denver by contributing her proven expertise on the Finance Committee. She died on February 23, 1919 in Denver at the home of her daughter, Charlotte Ensley Britton. Just months before the U.S. Congress passed the 19th Amendment affirming women's voting rights. In 2020, Elizabeth was named an honoree of the National Women's History Alliance and inducted into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. So the Ensley family plot is right over here. And you can see Elizabeth Enley right here, 1847 and 1919. Well, that's pretty cute. There are some, sorry for the shadow guys. There's some people put some I voted stickers on her grave. Let me go on this side. That's really cool. Since yeah, she helped get the ability for us women to vote here in Colorado. And she's buried right next to her daughter here, Charlotte Britton, who she lived with for a while. Then her husband, Newell, is right back here. And then here's her little daughter, Jean, oh, who died at age three months. Yeah, just one month after her husband died. Just must have been terrible. And then this is her mother, Jane, buried right here. And then this is her other child, her son, Roger. Yeah, and as I, as I was walking over here, I saw one that says, Baby Britain, which was her daughter Charlotte's last name so I wonder if that was Charlotte's baby and a grandbaby for Elizabeth so yeah this is the Ensley family plot right here
and Elizabeth. Rest in peace. Hope you enjoyed that video and getting to see the grave of Elizabeth Piper Ensley. Please like and subscribe for some more videos and I'll see you at the next grave. Thanks.